Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Cronin Challenge to Change. I'm so excited to be bringing with you such a beautiful guest today on the inside and out, Ms. Taryn Asher. But before I talk about our interview today with Ms. Asher, I want to thank you all for just being such regular, great viewers and such loyal fans of our show. Please join us on our YouTube channel. We'll be uploading content regularly. Also, please subscribe to our page so you'll get first notifications of anything that we pre present to you. Remember, we're always here for you. We're designing this program with you in mind to help give you hope, not only through this pandemic, but always. And please also join us on our Facebook Live show and our Instagram feed. Um, we're here for you 24-7, not only as a law firm, but also as some motivation, providing inspiration and hope. And uh, last week, we were fortunate enough to interview Ryan Beal. Ryan is a master of uh, counseling and therapy, and he was talking a lot about his passion, which is trying to deter teen suicides. And we all know that with a lot of divorce rates and high conflict cases of custody, those raises, those incidences raise the level of conflict and just such anxiety and depression in our young people. And we want to really work toward uh, making us be better, not only as co-parents, but just people in general, so we can help thwart our younger people and their depression and anxiety and just give them hope for life. And life is worth living and it can be so joy-filled. So please go back to that show. It will bring you such great information and knowledge and with knowledge is power. And that's where we can grow and learn. But without further ado, I'm so excited to bring Ms. Asher to you, Ms. Taryn Asher. She is our local celebrity and she is gonna be bringing to you some information and some more hope and help you through more of this precedenting time. And uh, here we are, Ms. Asher. Hi there. Hi, hi everyone. I'm so glad to be here. This is great. This is so nice. The setup, I love it. It's it's uh, it's so high tech. <laughs> <laughs> Me, it's not high tech, but yeah, this is good. This is our good. Our team is awesome. Our team at the Cronin Law Firm is awesome. So, um, Taryn, thank you so much for being here. I mean, you're so well known in our area. You're so well thought of, and I'm so excited that you are going to be just bringing more of you to our viewers. You are often the one questioning everybody and asking those tough questions, and I'm so excited to get some answers from you. So, you know, you're a working mom, and you've seen a lot of challenges in your lifetime. Have you ever seen a challenge like this? I mean, present to you as far as not only being a mom, but a working mom. Gosh, I can honestly say no. And I know a lot of people can agree with me. Uh, I don't know. It's a novel virus, right? So every day has just been interesting. And I'm sure we'll get to the career part and the journalism part about that in a second. But as a working mom, I mean, literally things changed overnight. And I was sent home and had we had some um, equipment given to us. Uh, I, like a day before, just in case we did have to go home. And it, uh, my husband's coworker got infected with the coronavirus and we didn't know much about it. So they didn't know if I was going to be affected, infected by association. So I was sent home. I was not, we have not been in our house. But um, I then by the next day had to set up this set, which is my fireplace. <laughs> above my fireplace and I have two lamps and some CD holders, you know, putting, oh, hanging up my uh, camera and my makeshift teleprompter. So, you know, it was like overnight that we had to do this. And then my daughter's home from school and I had to homeschool and we we're all on Zoom at the same time trying to figure this out and navigate our, as people keep saying, the new normal, but it really was. And I mean, there's a reason I didn't become a teacher, right? So, so I, I'm not. Um, we were trying to tag team that and try not to get her to play, you know, Roblox on the iPad and said, you know, go to school. And teachers didn't know what, were, what was going on. So it was hard for them to be able to give a curriculum that was impactful in these, you know, in those final months of school. 
So as a working mom, oh, there's a lot of stories. I mean, I have two dogs, a nine and a half year old, a husband trying to keep the house clean, trying to cook all the meals, trying to be this really exceptional journalist working from my lounge <laughs> and asking all the questions and then being very tech savvy at the same time, doing things I normally don't have to do where we, everybody has different jobs and then making sure, you know, being there emotionally um, and for my daughter, we, was, we were trying to explain that and, and still try to have some fun. So I think just like everybody else, I'm just trying to balance it day by day. And when people ask me that, I always say, this is my one piece of advice. I always say, don't try to think too far ahead. Try to take it a day at a time because whenever you do, you'll start to have your heart <laughs> flutter and you'll start to think, oh gosh, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. I need to worry about this. I need to be worrying about that. Really, all we know right now is day to day. So that's what we have to focus on. You know, Sharon, that's such a great point because anxiety sets in when people try to think too far ahead. And, you know, there are so many unknowns. You know, the CDC tells us one thing one day and then changes its mind, another, you know, down the road. And, we're all so confused and for little kids and for, you know, young people at home not to be with their friends in school. I mean, it can be anxiety provoking for them. So we have to be the strong ones for them. And it's yeah, so true. And it's nice that we've been finally able to get outside because that has been allowing people and the kids to see each other in the neighborhood or some, you know, socially distanced play dates, if you will, or people, you know, where they've been. But yeah, this is, I've said this um, in this business, is the only time we've presented the facts and then the facts change on a daily basis. I mean, there was a lot of retaliation. People were not happy that, well, you said this or you said that. Well, that was the information we were getting from the CDC or, um, you know, Dr. Fauci or our, our president, our governor. I mean, we were regurgitating those facts. And because no one knows what's going on with this virus and it's, you know, who's infecting who and how it keeps continuing to change, you know, so, so do our reports. And that's been kind of stressful as well, because you want to be able to give people, um, arm them with the best information so they can make informed decisions. But oof, it is, it has definitely been a challenge. Well, you know, you said um, during a prior interview that I've heard you speak in some of your bios talk about being, you know, knowing at a young age, you wanted to go into broadcast journalism <laughs> and you know, talking about the facts right now. What made you back then want to do this? Well, I was one of those weird kids that knew what they wanted to do when they were in second grade. And that is the honest God truth. Um, I, my parents uh, grew up in Detroit and Dearborn and, um, and uh, Italian Syrian family, and they ended up moving to the Fenton area because because my father was a builder and my mom once worked for Hudson's. And anyway, every, it was just a different life for us out on the lake, and it was nice. Um, but I knew I was one that ended up back in Detroit, and watching you know Detroit television, Detroit news. Mom growing up really made a big impact on me. I mean, Diana Lewis, Bill Bonds, even Sherry Margolis, who I was able to work with later on, um, Carmen Harlan, those, you know, that resonated with me where I wanted to be the first to know and the first to tell and, and be able to um, inform and tell stories and, you know, just the presence that they had watching um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Even at such a young age, I knew what I wanted to do. So because of that, I headed down that direction um, and solidifying it as the way I, I went with the day on the job when I was um, in high school and I knew it and then started interning very early, um, starting government access when I was in college. Very boring, reporting on planning, um, and zoning board of appeals meetings and township <laughs> board meetings, but you gotta get your start somewhere. And um, I was on the air at a CBS affiliate when I was in college and, you know, so it was, in Lansing, I went to Michigan State, so I started working at Channel 6 in Lansing and just continue to grow and make my way back into Detroit, and it's been just a great experience. A lot of ups and downs, just like every everything else in every other career, but uh, I've gone from uh, Lansing to Flint to Detroit and uh, continue to grow in each market, and that's been really helpful, and I even met my husband at my second station, so that now worked what out. What station was that? Your second so, season. yes, we were placed together. We always credit um, our news director, Jim Bleicher, at the time. I worked at ABC 12, 
and the Flint area, Saginaw Bay City here covers that whole grand area. And um, they put us as weekend morning co-anchors. And um, yeah, we hit it off and it took a long time because we wanted to make sure we were both fulfilling each other's dreams because we were both journalists. And, mm-hmm. and uh, he ended up going to Fox 2 first and we considered a lot of options and um, job offers and things of that nature. And then I ended up going there as well. And our, and our careers became um, Detroit centric. So <laughs> we are living our dream here. And uh, now he works at local four, but things are going really well. So we're- how long have you been married? 13 years. Wow. Yeah. That's so, great. And yeah, we, a uh, a yeah. daughter, nine and a half year old daughter. Yes. Yeah, so I was, you know, pregnant on television and, um, you know, went through the whole thing and so much support from the viewers. It really has meant so much. She's basically grown up, not overexposed. We won't do that. But, you know, she's grown up. Um, um, I guess she's been on TV a few times, but people enjoy um, hearing about her and where she where she's been and where she's going and how old she's gotten. And that means just so much to us because there's true love from viewers. I always say that the people in Michigan, I can speak because of through the knowledge, but um, people look at their news differently in Michigan. They really care about their news people. And I think, you know, in turn, we really care about our viewers too. And it's, it's really mm-hmm. special. It's different from working in other markets. There's real connection between everybody and it is like family. So it's been really nice. That's great. And you guys were working at the same station for a while. Yes. Was, was it it um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, we used to, we tell jokes that we used to, even when we were first dating, fight on commercial breaks. So then all of a sudden, ah, you know, we're all happy, but we're a normal couple, just like everybody else. And um, and then when we came here, um, yeah, but we've always, when we came here, we worked opposite schedules mostly. So that uh, also can be a blessing and a curse because when you start raising a child, that can be your almost single parents sometimes. So that can right. be tough, but um, you also get to spend a lot of time and she always has a parent around. So that's, that's been really good. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly got its challenges, but it also is good because we tend to do, we t- our uh, specialty tends to be in different things. So it, um, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's benefited us because of that. That's great. You know, I know you've received several Emmy awards too. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about that? And, you know what they were for and how did it make you feel? Um, I just received my first virtual Emmy. Uh, this, this was my fifth Emmy, but it was uh, virtually. We were watching it sitting on the back patio. So that was interesting. And, <laughs> and jean shorts and a t-shirt compared to a gown and, uh, you know, dressed <laughs> up. But it was, that was pretty exciting to see. Uh, it, that one was for a story I just recently um did oh I think I want to say last fall about two brothers who it's actually still working its way through the Michigan Supreme Court I'm sure COVID has delayed it but they were charged with their mother's murder although they were following her wishes because of a rare disease she had keeping her at home and letting her die the way that she wanted to die and because as uh, prosecutors felt that her, the conditions in the home was actually neglect and abuse and but leading to her death. But even though every court had thrown it out, um, the Wayne County prosecutors continued to bring it all the way up to the Michigan Supreme Court. So they're going to make a final decision at this point. But that's an interesting story. Um, I've helped uh, change Michigan law of the banning of synthetic drugs. There were a series of stories I've done Um, I exposed um, the cause of a home explosion that killed several children. Um, Back in the day, I had told a beautiful story about a 100-year-old veteran when she got to meet President Obama. So it's it's run the gamut of different topics. I've I've been blessed to um, win Michigan Association of Broadcasters, AP Awards, and and Emmys. And um, uh, that's great. It's a bit of a validation of what we do, but it doesn't make who we are. It's really the day-to-day um, stories we tell and the way that we communicate to our viewers, anchoring every day and connecting with them and the work that we do in the community that really makes a difference. But um, 23 years in the business, I'm, I don't regret a minute of it. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I know, I think your husband also got some awards too, didn't he? Oh, yeah. 
He's one of them. Um, boatload <laughs> of evidence, yeah. So not ever calling in due to being sick, right? He got that kind of award or oh, that's one he might have given himself in high school. <laughs> no, in high school. But no, he he does it. He really does not get sick and he got sick uh, this year when we returned home from Puerto Vallarta um, and had a, a flu or you know who knows it was in the beginning. No one knows really there was no testing available for coronavirus back then. So uh, no one knows who had what and when. There's many of us who could have had it and didn't even know it. And of course, we know the severity of all those other cases. That we right. Saw. How do you how do you um, think that the moving forward, your station will continue to work around the virus? Do you think you'll be working from home for quite a while yet? <laughs> Again, so many unknowns. Our corporate base is in New York, and they're really pushing us to stay home as much as possible. They have built pods um, within our studio. Our general manager, Greg Easterly, um, has been fantastic about how he is, and my news director as well, Kevin Roseboro, but they have um, really tried to be strategic about that. I think we have been, um, maybe the station's brought uh, the least amount of people back at this point. Um, I don't know going forward. I know we are lucky to have a lot of different studios and a large building. So we're able to kind of put people in different positions. You know, you think about it, we're never going to be able to go to the coffee, pour coffee together. We used to have this Fox 2 table, people brought in things or brought in food or whatever. That no doesn't exist. Even the simplest things, walking up to the assignment desk and the whole thing has has changed the way we do our business. And so um, I don't see producers and writers coming back, very few. Most of them will stay home, maybe September, maybe the first of the year we're hearing. Um, a lot of us will probably rotate in or out. I know a lot of people have had trouble at the home sets, even with our Wi-Fi, it's been really challenging. I'm surprised we're not even having a problem right now with mine. So I don't know. I know we're being very conservative. We're being very safe. Um, uh, you know, I think they want to err on the side of caution just because they're, are, they're worried about another surge and we're starting to see those numbers go right now. So um, I can't give you a definitive answer on that because we don't even know. Well, you know, I know that you had a few years back some health scares of your own. Does that play into some of your fear now with the pandemic or are they, how do you feel about that? And if, would you like to talk about what you yeah. are most with? Well, I think these are two different different things. I do want to say something about this because because since the beginning, I have been. I know there's been people, I'm very scared, um, and some people think it was a hoax. I, you know, obviously we know there's something going on. I've really tried to stay in the middle and just used, like I've said, use facts to help, or facts over fear to navigate my decisions and how I handle my day to day life and with my family. That really has zero to do. Mine was a, a series of flukes that just happened. Um, I, I don't mind talking about it. I, I spoke, I actually used it as a way to have women pay attention to their symptoms. I was one of those people, I thought I had food poisoning. Um, it turned. It was during a holiday week of July 4th. I had a cyst rupture on my ovary, which turns out to be very common, except rupturing and having um, you bleed two liters into your abdomen is not. So um, I didn't know it. And I went to work anyway, because I felt guilty for calling in on a holiday because we're so short staffed. Uh, the next day, I woke up with a fever. I, I called in, I went to the ER, uh, urgent care. They said they couldn't rule out appendix. And uh, had my husband meet me at the ER and I had emergency surgery that night. It took them a long time to figure out what was going on. But once they did, they it was starting to, um, and I want to be able to, uh, toxic where um, the infection had set in. So it was good. They told me that I came in when I did. They, you know, I was fine by the next day. Um, and then oddly enough, I had gotten a virus randomly from being in the hospital of my heart and I got pericarditis. And I got sent to the hospital less than a week later to another hospital. Luckily I had a friend who was a nurse and uh, helped me, and I went to another hospital, and they, it, I had some troponin levels that made them think high, which makes people think they had a stroke or a heart attack, and I said, what? I just did yoga, I just ran five miles, so what do we, how could that 
uh, be, and it was not, none of the above. I have zero underlying conditions. Um, been to a cardiologist, I'm completely fine. It was something that I, a virus that I got, and there's nothing you can do to treat it. So I had uh, three weeks off three years ago to get my health back in order, which was just a very random experience. I mean, I wanted to be able to blame it on something so you could not do it again, but I couldn't. And then I just used it as a way to tell women, hey, look at me. I, They said, I mean, it could have been very bad if I didn't go in. I, I don't like to say it out loud. Um, if I didn't finally say that something's not right. And right. Uh, it made me pay closer attention to my symptoms. And, um, and I do now. And I really push my friends too, because they're a bunch of working moms too, <laughs> that um, or regular moms. I mean, any mom that, I don't mean to say it like that, but it doesn't matter. Um, I think women in general tend to put themselves on the back burner. So you have to pay attention to what's going on with your body so you can take action and, and do what you need to do. Well, you know, that's so important too, especially now being at home. You know, we started talking earlier about how hard and challenging it was to not only do your job if you are a working mom, but also homeschool. I mean, I have three little ones. Oh and my gosh. Homeschooling every single day, three little ones, and trying to maintain my business was challenging to say the least. And so we are the first ones to forego our rituals, taking care of ourselves. And, you know, I wasn't working out like I used to, and I wasn't eating the way I should. And you know, that really wears down your self-esteem and your stamina and your energy and being able to give back. So yes, to your point, it's so important now more than ever, especially since so many of us are still working from home. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you, you talked earlier, Taryn, too, about fact, you know, make sure you know the facts to help with your fear or to overcome your fear. And so many people are listening to the media, not really understanding all of the whole picture of this, you know, virus and the coronavirus and the novel virus. How do you talk to somebody about, you know, yes, listen to the media because like you, you're a journalist, you want to get out the facts, but then, okay, but it changes every day. So how do we control our fear? I think it's been, it, it is tough because I don't think anybody will argue that this has all become very politicized. So, um, and unfortunately, it's not. It's a real virus. So I think you tread lightly. You don't try to get too, too passionate when you're trying to inform someone, sadly, because, you know, it becomes argumentative with people. I mean, you're talking with a friend and I mean, a glass of wine outside and all of a sudden you could see it maybe flip because they don't have the same beliefs as you do. And it shouldn't shouldn't be like that, in my opinion, in this day and age. So I, I think that you just you focus on the things that we know right now for sure. Not, you know, we, I always make fun of the people say, they say, well, who's they? <laughs> you know, we talk about that all the time. Who's they? Like, what's your source? So, and uh, unfortunately, and I think it's being corrected a lot on social media, but people are, are getting a lot of bad information from bad sources. So just make sure you stay on point with the CDC or the WHO or, um, doctors you trust and know and, and things, you know, obviously the news, we are all, every station is doing the best they can right now. I'm um, in such uncharted territory and uh, we're all on the same side. So I don't know if there's a specific way. It's just, if you see one thing, maybe Google it and read a few articles on it and see what's really out there because- And not just the headlines. Not just the headline, do your due diligence and make sure that you know, um, you know, it's not somebody's opinion. It is, you know, that it's based on some truth and some real studies. That's, that's right. what I would do. And how do you, working from home, how do you research all of these stories now? The well, same way before? I yes, mean, it's just remote. I mean, we do our Zoom interviews. We do um, the same. I have my same, one of my same computers with the same access. It just um, is a little tougher. We're still having meetings at work. Uh, you know, interviewing, we're still anchoring from home and it's, it's a lot, it's just, it's a little more difficult. I will say that. Uh, but yeah, that's, it's the same. We're just, it's not as pretty maybe as talking to people in person sometimes. Um, but you know, we're, I think it's improved quite a bit. Look, we're doing this fancy Facebook live <laughs> or show. So look at that. It's pretty remarkable. Right. 
you know, it's amazing. We, we adapt and we overcome and we, you know, we move forward. You know, that's, that's life. You know, they, they say life is like, you know, you have to keep riding the bicycle to move, you know, you got to move forward. Right. It's, it's yeah. just, uh, it's just keeping that momentum going. Um, and I'm getting a couple questions from some of our viewers. So, um, here's, here's one of them. Um, I'm a student at Michigan school of journalism. I'm also a huge fan of yours. What advice can you offer new graduates coming into this profession during these strange times? And this, this is going to, and that's interesting because I don't, I can tell you what typically I would recommend is to intern as early as you possibly can. Um, start wherever you can um, at the ground up even interning places that you might want to end up so you can get your foot in the door there so they know who you, who you are, you know, and they know your name and then go back and pay your dues until um, you eventually make it back to that larger station. Now, we're talking coronavirus time and people are not even in these studios and they're certainly not going to be accepting interns, let alone guests. So I think that they need to be able to get on these websites um, the station's websites, LinkedIn, I know, has become a very big source, and see if they're offering writing positions, if they're offering um, things that you can do um, at the ground level, at the very beginning, um, start of your career, so you can start um, doing it now and be able to get that on your resume because we will beat this sooner or later, even though it'll be a new normal. We will be able to get back into the stations and the studios and you'll be ready. You'll be in a position to say, look, I did it during COVID and I was able to do it under these very strange circumstances. And I was able to do an interview on Zoom. You know, that's a big thing now. Young people with the social media, they have such an advantage. They're calling what Generation Z, the Zoom generation. So they can do things that it took me a lot longer to figure out. And so if it was me, I would just try to get as many things on your resume as possible. Get your foot in every door and just try to make your mark until things change a bit. And then you can come, you know, come join us in the newsroom. That's actually a great, um, some really great advice. So to you who wrote in that question, please take it. Um, run with it that to, to work now during this time of stay home and staying home orders. It's so important to make your mark. That's such a great, great advice. And, um, you know, I know that with courts, because as you know, I'm an attorney and so many of our court hearings are conducted via zoom and they're saying more and more that the new normal will be that more hearings will be conducted via zoom. Mm -hmm. Do you think in your profession you know, I know that we will return to a new normal at some point and you'll go back to the studio at some point. But do you think now some of these interviews will stay remote and able to be, you know, actually more advanced because of that? I do. I think that everybody's had to pivot. I think in terms of our station, a lot of the anchors will be coming back because it helps with the flow of our show. And, uh, and just technically speaking, I think field reporters will stay out there. Um, and I think writers and producers, now that they can, will be home. So it depends on what you want to do. And uh, and like you said, I mean, I do think there's going to be a lot of court cases. And um, we know now telehealth when it comes to mental health or doctor's appointments. A lot of it is being done online. And that's great. I think maybe it will advance us in many ways. But um, I think it's also going to be tough on us, socially speaking, as well. Um, and we can get just to the simple place of human interaction. <laughs> you know, I think that's going to be tough because when things get maybe a little heightened and before they get a treatment or vaccine, we're all locked down again. And that's, I think it's tough. I have thought it was so interesting to see how people have made do with the circumstances they're in, um, be able to work from home or work from wherever. I mean, I had to do an interview with an attorney one day and he pulled over on the side of the road and did a Zoom interview with me on his phone in a parking lot. And it almost, there's a little bit more immediacy now um, when it comes to interviews before you would have to get your photographer, uh, load up in a truck, or a car and drive to that location and bike traffic and then you go do the interview. You know, now it's just, you log on, you send a link, you know, if they can do it, it's great. Maybe a little of the quality 
is, is missing um, in terms of the background or the atmosphere, but you know, there's some pros and cons to this. Oh, I bet, and, and technology has made it possible. Whereas, you know, years ago, 10 years ago, even five years ago, we couldn't do this today, you know? No. So there, you're right, there are positives, there are, you know, definite advantages and benefits. And so we always have to look at the, the bright side in all of this and, and, uh, and keep moving, <laughs> keep moving. Um, I'm getting some other questions, Taryn. Um, uh, hi, Sabrina and Taryn, as a working mom, how do you both cope with mommy guilt my kids and dog are more attached to me since COVID, but I still have an out of the house profession. I feel awful for leaving my kids guilty for working and not being always there for my husband. So that's to you. <laughs> that's to me. Okay. Um, I think I had mom guilt myself uh, working, you know, three to 1130 every single night. And that's really tough, even though you have uh, maybe a break to come home for a while or, or mornings. I, you know, I don't think any mom is not going to have mom guilt um, for one reason or another. I know mine has gone down quite a bit because I happen to be working from home. So I feel, I don't feel that pulled in, in 